Hey buddy, it's for New Star, and this is part two of Dog Days the platformer tutorial. The reason why it took so long is that I was actually trying to uh, do it actually yesterday and the day before yesterday, but um, it actually ended up not working. Uh, the reason behind that is actually that apparently I had saved some objects to a different file and it couldn't pull it up. So I was like, oh shoot, I'm totally not going to rebuild this. So I was like, okay, I already have one built. I'm just I'm going to basically show you and then um, upload it so you can download it. So, one moment. All right, let's do this. Okay, so I'm going to go back th through what we did before. So, you, you know, you can chapter head to the part that you uh, were at. But basically, it's okay. Here we have, you know, a layout, and each layout is going to have an event sheet and an event sheet is basically what the code happens for that layer or that room or game so in this we just have you know a sprite a background multiple sp sprites and actually to import these you just go to open and that's for a project I'm working on And all you do is you basically just import that tile. So you would double click and boom, you got it. Um, you would also want to set solid for that object due to the fact that you know your character will be on it. And so you don't want him falling through the floor. Now we also set a text box right there. And to do that, all you do is click right, insert new object, click text and then you um, basically write what you want on it over here now this button let's pop up the code for that now this button is not is not as advanced as the one we had in the game to where um, it would get pushed and animate but we can do that actually right here where okay on left click um see I'm gonna actually pull up the animation so we can see it. So I'll go out layout one, there it is, there's the names. Let's go to event sheet one, on left clicked, uh sprite let's go to actually we don't actually let's just do this. Um set animation the animation to button push done so on mouse let's see button release left released we want to set this to set animation to default And then move this over there. So if we run it, Hold on one second. Okay, so, uh, oh, okay. I moved the wrong thing. Uh, not export project, let's run project. I just moved the wrong little code box. So there we go. And there we go. And then we can go to the actual game. Well, there we go. So,
I actually, I think I'm going to add one more. Uh, so I was, on one of my other ones, they have like, you know, animation finished. So I don't think it's here. I think it's if you do something else. Okay, but you know, we, we have the idea that, you know, when you click it, it does the button click animation and then it will move us to the next level. That's what we want. So it clicks, we go to the next level. So that's what we want. So let's go to layout two. And layout two is basically a very simple um layout two. Go to yeah, this basically let's go to the layer that this button represents. And this button represents layer um, level one or layout three. Now layout three gets a little more complicated, but you know you'll have the whole um, you will have the project to look at. And if you look at my tutorial, the first dog days tutorial, you have the assets right there. So all the assets, uh, I'm gonna zoom in here, are set as solid, so the character does not run through. Now, this character has multiple animations, and so you just click right, and then you just add an animation, and then you just name it. Yeah, but he has all the animations that you know he needs: idle, jump, and move. Um, and then to import animations, so. Okay, because you know he just has one, uh, basically frame per animation, or you can import sprite strips, um, or frame animations, uh, or you know import frames. So you can select you know two, three hundred, or even six, you know frames, or you know add a frame per frame animation, which we'll do it in another series actually. Um, but each each one is this very um, like I'm gonna import idle, so let's import frames and blue dog idle. Basically, it's his set, so I'm gonna say open. Boom, we have it. But since we already have it, I'm gonna delete that. Now, when he moves, um, just ignore everything and just you know follow the cursor. So on left arrow pressed. So when you press the left arrow, because we set him, his behaviors, to platform and scroll two. So on left arrow pressed, simulate him going left. Simulate uh, set animation to move. So okay, what's his animation for move? That's his animation for move. So we need to say okay, select this animation move. No, we don't want it, you know, sprite speed five at this point it this doesn't matter. So, you know, that one frame is move. And set as mirrored because um non mirrored goes right. Mirrored goes left. Because when we import him I don't know, that's just how it works. Um just you know, set it as mirrored because you know when basically when we switch, you know, when we switch between right and left, we need to tell the computer, okay, it will be mirrored. Uh, you know, we're gonna say, okay, we're gonna mirror his command for the right side. Um, when right side, uh, when right arrow is pressed, we're gonna simulate the platformer simulate the character going right simulate him moving so we want the same animation on left just move but we're not going to mirror him because we don't okay basically mirror means we're going to copy everything from the left arrow to the right arrow but he's going to be flipped not mirrored means okay he's facing to the right but we don't want that we want him Default left, which when we imported him, he was facing yeah, no, he was facing right when we imported him. So we mirror him, we flip him, 
so it looks right but when we hit the left arrow ar arrow again we don't want a mirrored so that will say oh okay you don't want a mirrored we'll just face them right I, I kind of set it up weird but don't worry when you download it you're going to see everything um, when a left arrow because he's facing right left arrow mirrors which means he's going to be facing that way okay boom boom okay so mirrored yeah mirrored would be this not mirrored would be that okay let's you know get that that's done <laughs> kind of confusing everything left arrow released mirrored everything left will be mirrored everything right will not be mirrored um air up arrow doesn't matter you don't have to put mirrored on that you just say you know simulate platform pressing jump set animation to jump on up arrow released set animation to idle right when uh, right arrow is down simulate platform pressing right set animation to move not mirrored some of the stuff gets really advanced. Uh, basically, I didn't want choppy animations because I was going to release, uh, when I keep releasing one button then to another button, he would, he'd basically go to idle um, animation while he's still up in the air. He should be in the move animation. So right arrow is down. When, when this arrow is down, say um, I'm telling him to jump right. So I'll have the up button and I'll have the right button pressed, simulate him going right. But if you know I release the up button and he's going down, I don't want him in an idle position. I want it to check, oh, he's still pressing right. So we're going to continue having the move animation and he's just going to continue moving right. And then you just set that for the left. Up arrow, down, simulate you know him jumping. On collision with bone. Now this is something a little bit different. So let's take a little pause. This is different from totally the whole move animation. On collision with a cookie, and the cookie is the dog bone, right here. Zoom in on that said dog bone. When the dog collides with the cookie, add one to cookie counter. Now that's a system um, variable. So this cookie, you want to go to instant variables and you want to create a instant variable number, initial value zero, Actually, well, initial value one. So it's name cookie, it's type number, initial value is one because this cookie is worth one cookie. So we're going to then add one cookie, you know, to instant behavior cookie. Mm -hmm. So, let's zoom out, boom, add it to cookie counter, uh, cookie, cookie counter. So you want a global, you want a global event called cookie counter. So click right, add global variable. Name it cookie counter, set it to initial value. That's basically where all the cookies are going to go. Then what you want, let's zoom in here, is set text to cookie counter. So enter, so basically, um, you, you, you basically put what the global event is, cookie counter. So basically, this number. And you remember, you want to select this text. This is a text box. Um, you want to name it cookie counter. On collision, no, it's basically once you have this down, once you have this down, then you know you can add more stuff to it. So we're adding stuff to cookie counter. On collision with sprite 13, it's a big, huge doggy cookie and you know, let's zoom over there and this is a big cookie we add we uh, this is worth 10 regular cookies set that text to cookie counter 
and then go to the next level. So, what should happen? And if you're having any trouble to, with this, you know, just message me down below. Um, but you know, you will have the pr uh, project. So it's loaded up. We hit play. We hit the first level. That's one cookie. That's two cookies. Three cookies. Four cookies. We get too many cookies. Uh, cookie should actually disappear. So what you would do is on collision with cookie, this cookie would be destroyed. And then we hop, boom, we, you know, go to next layer with 150 cookies. So basically on, so what we're going to do is set, you know, on collision with cookie, uh, cookie destroyed. Now I'm actually going to add a wait system here. So I'm going to wait one second before we go to layout so we can actually see that, hey, we got a hundred or, uh, you know, ten something cookies. So we hit play, we go to first layer, we're moving, we're moving, that cookie's destroyed, you know, haven't found any enemies, oh, what's this? It's a cookie, wait one second, boom, we're at 11 cookies. Now, uh, for the next tutorial, we're going to actually be moving into building multiple levels and having this having a check mark. So say uh, we're gonna have a, a, a variable check saying, okay, if you collected more than 10 cookies, you get a gold star. If you collected fewer than 10 cookies, but more than five, you get a silver star. If you only collected between one and five cookies, then, you know, you only get, you know, what is it, bronze? So then you would have a bronze uh, star or whatever over that. So basically, we would actually have a spawner. So we would have a blank, you know, entity here. Um, and then it would be told the variable and then it would spawn the object. So um, new object. I'm just going to create a sprite. But I'm actually going to color it so we can see it. And then shrink it, shrink it, shrink it to the size of what we want. So this would actually spawn in its code. It would get a, um, from layout three from this cookie uh, saying, hey, we're going to go to, um, you know, we're going to go back to layout two so we can go on to the next layer. But I want you to check how many cookies this character has collected. And then an instant variable, uh, basically the code for layout 2 is going to check, okay, this character has collected 11 cookies. Well, he deserves, you know, he's, he, he, he has more than 10 cookies. He deserves a gold star. So this, what this would do is it would actually, let's go to sprite. And these would be off on the side. Is it would give you a... And these would actually be right here. So I'm actually going to place those right there so we know what to do for the next game. And that's bronze. Is that these would spawn one of these over there. And these are end game resources that you'll never see but it needs to pull them. And so this would say, okay, check, check, check. Okay, I'm going to, um, this variable saying that, you know, he has more than 10. I'm gonna pop this over here. Boom, you have gold. And then you play the next one, the next one, the next one. But that's what we're gonna do. Um, look down below for the download. If you need or have any questions, you know, please message me and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Hopefully you understood this and that's part two. Uh, sorry for the long delay, but hopefully it helped out. And in the next one, we're going to be doing 
Um, I'm going to be actually building the next level so you can see how you know we build levels and construct. It's actually really easy, but I want you guys to totally understand it from the ground up. Um, and then we're going to go into variables of you know going to the next level, but also checking this. Like, you know, do you, do you deserve a silver, a bronze? Actually, silver should be up there. It doesn't look, looks gray, not actually like silver, silver. So do you deserve a uh, uh, bronze, silver, or gold? And then how to spawn it there. And then, you know, you can always go back to it and it will always check your um, variables and then give you a gold, bronze, or whatever. So you can always kind of update them and then go to the next level and then in the next level, we're actually going to have um, our first enemy, a single enemy, and we're going to code him. And then, you know, if you kill the enemy, it will um, spawn a cookie. So you can, you know, if you kill more enemies, you can't find all the cookies because you're supposed to find all the cookies uh, at the end um, or the big cookie at the end. That's how you get to the level. Uh, but you know you find these little cookies and it raises your score but hopefully you know you understand you understand this and have fun with the next tutorial guys see you guys in the next one bye